Today on Indie Author Blueprint, I'm going to be talking about the variations of self-publishing. I'll talk about a vanity press, self-publishing, and what sets a true indie author apart from other self-publishing options. So here we go. In the previous episode, if you listened to the very first one, I talked about some of the differences between traditional publishing and self-publishing, and I went into a little bit of detail, actually quite a bit of detail, on self-publishing, but I want to talk about that a little bit more because this is where the stigma really comes in. And so if you've talked about self-publishing a book, you maybe have had people say that, um, that's not legitimate. (laughs) You've maybe had people who have called that vanity publishing. And you've maybe had people say that it shouldn't cost you anything to publish a book. So let's talk about that. First, vanity presses. A vanity press is a self-publishing company that accepts everything with the goal of publishing, but not with a goal of quality. An author can then say they have a book, but they're very difficult to market. So oftentimes with the vanity press, it costs quite a bit of money. You will see some fake, like, bestseller kind of claims, like they can get you to a certain level, get your picture on the New York Times downtown, you know, something like that, Um, like on the billboard um, in Times Square. Um, And a lot of it is focused on just having the book. And if you've ever picked up a book, and you realize that just something's off. Maybe it has almost no margins or there aren't any headings in the book or the font size is really weird. Um, there, Anybody can publish a book. Anybody can. And with AI now, there are people who are actually publishing books with really crappy quality. And so a vanity press, the reason it's called a vanity press is because it really caters to our vanity of being able to say, I published a book or I wrote a book. And I've seen authors who crank out books like, you know, they're just putting out more and more books and they haven't stopped to really go for quality. And so I open them up and I can tell immediately they were done in Word and they weren't formatted correctly. And um, the spacing is just weird. And so Uh, vanity presses don't take the time really to get that fixed. They take what you send. And so if you didn't send it with good quality or good editing or whatever, they just publish it. If you didn't break up your paragraphs and you have like uh, two whole pages without any paragraph breaks, they won't even fix that. And so a vanity company just takes your manuscript, gets it out there for you. Now, vanity printing is also a possibility. Vanity printing, and it's not necessarily vanity always. So if you're somebody who's done this, just hang in with me, okay? This is where the author takes a book to a local printer to get copies made, but they don't publish it with an ISBN or use wide distribution. And I give that caveat that I just gave because there are some people who do that because um, they actually, they're doing like a workshop or something and, and they need to put out that content that way. And it's like a little, like a booklet, but it's, it's a glossy cover. It's more than a booklet. You know, there are reasons for why you would take content and go to a print shop and get some copies made. But if you're writing a book, let's say it's a novel. Okay. Let's go with a novel. If you just take your novel down and you get it printed, that's fine. If you're like writing a family memoir or something like that, that you aren't intending to market. But if you're writing a novel, you're probably hoping you're going to get some people to read it and want it in libraries and stuff like that. And you're not going to be able to do that if you just go and get it printed because you're not going to have the barcode and all the things that stores want. So some authors use Amazon KDP, and I'll get into what KDP is in a coming episode, or Ingram Spark, and they don't understand the process and they produce a book that doesn't sell at all. And what they've essentially done is use that platform almost like vanity printing. They haven't really worked on the cover. They haven't worked on the interior and how it's laid out. And And so Vanity Press is when you go with a self-publishing company that doesn't really care all that much. And they just care about giving you a book. And Vanity Printing is when you do it yourself and you don't really care about quality all that much. Now, I think if you have a message that matters that much, you need to treat it like it matters. You need to make a quality book 
Because if you're putting out a bunch of stuff and hoping people are going to buy it and you see the negative reviews that come in, it's not really fair to your readers who have invested their money and their time. It's not fair to yourself because you want something that is worth something, a product that changes somebody's life. Now, there are some self-publishing things you can do that involve a free ISBN or one supplied by the publishing platform. So uh, we've talked about Vanity Press, we've talked about Vanity Printing, and then the other thing you can do as an indie author is you can publish with things like BookBaby, Amazon KDP, Ingram Spark, and some of these companies with a free ISBN. And this is not the same as a barcode, by the way. We'll talk about barcodes in another episode. But you can publish it and use their free registration process and not go through some of the business side of things that you really need to do to be an indie author. Now, here's what happens. You get to use one of their their company's ISBN numbers. And an ISBN is like the ID number for your book. And once you assign an ID number to a book, it is the permanent record for that book. The only way that you can get a different one or get one that's tied to you then is to start over and re-release your book with a new ISBN. So once you pick one of those free ones, that company becomes what we call the publisher of record. And that means you're going to see um, Amazon listed maybe as the publisher, or if you were to look up the ISBN number, that's what you're going to see, that they own it. You're going to see that Ingram owns it. And so that book is tied to that company and not really to the author themselves. And I don't advise this, because then they kind of, they control your content. If you want to take it off that platform and put it on another platform, you can't because the other one owns it. So let's say you release the book using all the free stuff that Amazon has. You can't take it and publish it on another bookstore because if you take it off Amazon, it's still your book, but you can't release that particular book. You start over. So those are some of the different variations that come in self-publishing. Now, The question that comes up then is what sets a true indie author apart from other self-publishing options? When we look at like hybrid, which I've talked about in a previous episode, or vanity publishing. An author might define themselves as an indie author because they have chosen a self-publishing route. But a true indie publisher treats a book and the publishing process as a serious business and not something just for the prestige of having a book in their hands. An indie author slash publisher is the owner of their own publishing company for their books. And an indie author who is a publisher carries out the CEO duties. And so I'm going to give you some of those duties that you carry out as the CEO of your company. And I don't call myself a CEO because I'm a solopreneur. That's what I am. A CEO would make it sound like... um. I'm trying to be more lofty than I am, but these are the duties that a CEO would do. They study other books in their genre. They analyze covers. They look at categories and keywords, and they know what those mean. They understand the market. They treat the publishing process like a business venture. They desire a quality finished product because it reflects on their business. They create a marketing plan. They set up appropriate business registrations if they need to, doing business as or relevant legal things or the tax things that they need to do. The CEO understands the pitfalls of taking shortcuts and wants to do things the right way. They know their own weaknesses and they hire professionals to do the key tasks. So my action step for you today is how do you feel about owning a business? I want you to think about it. I want you to think about how much are you willing to invest? And I'm talking about time as well as money because the money part is not really the big part. The time and the energy is the big part. And I have seen that people think that it's super easy to publish a book. And I want you to understand that it's just like anything you're doing that is brand new to you. You're going to have to invest time and energy, and it's going to take a little bit of stress maybe, and it's going to take a little bit of learning and all the things that go into knowing how to run your business. So how do you feel about owning a business? 
In the next episode, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of indie publishing and having your own imprint.